The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN just after 9 a.m. Eastern Time, Tuesday morning. Hope everyone had a great Memorial Day weekend, three-day weekend, back to the market, and we pick things up in negative territory. And we start things off, futures actually trading over uh, the overnight even in Monday action, you made it above 4,200. So we start the futures off in the S&P negative by 25 points, but we are 72 points off of the highs. Now, I wouldn't give as much credit to that high. Talk about thin trading. Uh, when you're talking about May 30th, early, early, 5 a.m. Eastern time of 4202, but it's been a slow descent to 4129. We finished last week, Thursday and Friday with remarkable action to the upside. Pretty amazing. We have a 3,800 print one week ago, folks, 30, Tuesday morning, excuse me, 3872 in the S&Ps, we trade up a solid 300 points to the upside. And just like that, we backed off a bit. Now, I'll start things off. I'm going to back things up on a daily. What I do want to point out here, that run that we just had, you had lower prices coming at you for the entire month of April, a lot of May. You trade from about 46.31 is the high on March 29th down to a low of about 3807. Now, where you wanna put the low here, okay? We have a Fibonacci retracement level, and the point is, we just popped to pretty much a 382. Now, where are you gonna take the bottom line of that, okay? You could go all the way down to 3807. I kinda lined it up with the bodies of where we were on May 12th, where we were on May 18th, May 19th, 20th, 23rd, and we made it down there as well on the 24th. Uh, if you do, let's activate that. If you do bring this down, to about 38.07, then you see that we made it just over that price level. But something to keep in mind, that bounce that we got, and boy, that bounce, it only took four trading sessions, May 24th, 25th, 26th, and 27th. That was Tuesday's low in the S&P. So in four trading days, you basically get up to the 382 that we've been in for six or seven weeks, okay? Keep that in mind. Is it a bear market rally? I think it's Morgan Stanley out there saying potentially it is today. We'll jump over to that in a moment. Let's continue with the market wrap. We get the NASDAQ 100. You're negative by 44 points right now. You get the Dow. Now the NASDAQ 100 as well, back to a short-term time frame chart. You're about 250 points off of the highs that you had. So you're negative by 40 points, but these markets were much higher in a very, very thin market, of course, for the Memorial Day when futures were trading. Dow off 212 points. We're under 33,000. We were as high as 33,434. We jump around to Bitcoin. So Bitcoin catches a little bit of a bid, man. Last Tuesday, you're at 28,000. The low is actually Thursday at 27,995. You opened at almost 32,000. You got Bitcoin up almost 3,000 on the session. We'll see if it holds this week. Bitcoin, particularly volatile. You have gold right now. Negative by $5 on the session, you have, there's crude. Talk about a one-way ascent, man. We did just pull back almost a dollar. Look at that move, man. We pulled back almost a dollar in the last 20 minutes. But when you put crude, let's just put it on a 30-minute. You talk about a run, man. A week and a half ago, what day is that? May 19th, so 12 days ago, you're at 103. You're at 118, 118 right now. And just look where we were Thursday, man. You were trading at 111 on Thursday, and you put this thing on a daily, we're pushing 120, haven't been at that level since that like three-day peak that we got up to 130. We're now above the highs in crude that we had on March 24th. We're above the highs that we were on May 17th. Crude up another $3.56 at 118.63, coming off the Memorial Day weekend. That's some serious action, man. We jump over to notes and bonds. Back to lower prices and higher yields. Jumping over right now, we're looking at a yield pushing 2.86%, 2.86%. Look at that drop off we just had, man. Now on Sunday, you were trading from 120.06, but just in the last few minutes, 8.15 a.m. Eastern time, you spiked from 119.19, down about 15 ticks to 119.06. We're five ticks off of the low right now. And yeah, you're talking about 
2.86%. We were at 2.73% just last week. Uh, the movement in those yields and note market, yield and note market, pretty remarkable. And with that, we jump over to home prices this morning. So we get the jobs number on Friday. We got some big earnings out. We'll go over those as well. We got home prices uh, data out this morning. How about 20% in March as interest rates also rose? So nationally, home prices 20.6% higher than they were in March of 2021. This one's amazing, folks. The 10-city comp rose 19.5% annually in March, up from 18.7% in February. My feeling is if you got a lot of investment properties, folks, this one just could take a little bit longer. But boy, when you look at the impact that rates are having on what consumers can buy for houses, you can't tell me that they're going to go up forever, man. I know rents are going up at an extreme level, so it's not like it's 2008. But you can't go up at 20% forever at the same time that you have rates going up, causing the normal consumer an extremely higher payment. Uh, the 20 city comp, 21.2%. Average rate on a 30-year fixed rate mortgage was 3.3% at the start of January and ended March at 4.7%. I'm rounding. We're sitting at what, 5.2, 5.3? Maybe we're down a little bit since yields got back to about 2.75%. Regionally, Phoenix slipped from the top gainer for the first time in three years with Tampa taking over. This market's crazy, folks. Uh, Tampa, Phoenix, and Miami continued to see the highest gains with increases of, get this, 34.8%, 32.4%, and 32% respectively. 34.8%. 17 of the 20 cities reported higher price increases in the year ending March 22 versus the year ending February uh, 2022. The smallest price gains in here, folks, Minneapolis at 12.4, Washington at 12.9, Chicago at 13%. Uh, part of the reason why I moved down to Tampa 17 years ago, my goodness, is because of the cost of living. I think that's changed, folks. There's been a repricing in this market. There's been a repricing in many real estate markets across the nation uh, with people moving, becoming more mobile, becoming able to work from home in a greater capacity. But that doesn't mean you might see a little bit of a pullback, folks, when you have a 35% rise in the price, you know, especially some of these markets, right? And I'm a full believer in Tampa, beautiful St. Petersburg. Uh, but when you have rates raising, rising at the level they are and you have this type of price appreciation, you have to figure out what that's doing to people that can pay that type of a payment because you have a 34.8% rise in just the price and then you have the increase to the payments going from three point what three point three percent did they just say about a year ago to five point three percent? Yeah, three point two nine percent one year ago. Uh, that is a huge dramatic effect, folks. When you think about it, because thirty four point eight percent, right? That means a a three hundred thousand dollar house is now going for four hundred thousand, even more than that, actually. So a year ago, you're buying a $300,000 house at 3.3%. This year, you're buying a $400,000 house at 5.3%, causing that payment to be dramatically higher. Maybe my dad and best friend will have to run those numbers on Friday, as they do sometimes when they uh, talk a little real estate, because it's big numbers, folks. These numbers, 34.8%, and it's there. The numbers are there. The real estate prices, they are up that much. That's not funny math, okay? Yeah, they're not gonna go you know, into the tank, but if you got investment properties, man, do the math on what those can do. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be coming back talking to our man Kevin Hinks. We'll talk a little earnings this week. We'll be right back. In a time of booming inflation, where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in a tier one mining district. This is a large scale, low cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd feasibility study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve in a 16 year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits this distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner, ready development stage gold project. Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ.
Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&Ps negative by 21 points right now. You're looking at a NASDAQ 100 negative by 21 points as well. We have the opening bell coming up in about 12 minutes. All the markets somewhat near Flat territory, you get the Dow floating with 33,000 right now, 32,966. You're negative by 192 points on the session. We jump over that crude contract back above 119. We're floating right at 119 right now on the dot at crude, up $3.96 to start off the week. All right, I want to talk a little earnings this week in terms of what we have going on. Checking out a chart here, uh, lots of companies coming out. Some of the ones that jump out, we have Salesforce after the close tonight. We got Victoria's Secret after the close tonight as well. You go forward in the week, we have GameStop and Chewy after the close on Wednesday. Fan favorite GameStop, among some others. Uh, and you jump to Thursday, we got Restoration Hardware. Lululemon, a big one on Thursday after the market as well. Uh, some earnings coming up. And uh, what do we get on Friday as well, folks? We get employment numbers for the month of May. Today, the final trading day of May. Tomorrow, June 1st. Remarkable. So we'll get non-farm payroll numbers on Friday. For the month of May, we'll get wage data on Friday as well. Always an important one. Uh, yeah, the, the, the week is going to move quick with data, folks, as we come into June already. You're seeing that housing data out this morning already. All right, jumping around to some of the other articles I have pulled up. I talked about it at the start of the program. Morgan Stanley says the U.S. stock rally has limited upside. Growth is slowing and earnings estimates are too high. It's going to be about earnings, folks. You've seen that play out recently in the last couple months. So Morgan out. Uh, Morgan Stanley's Michael Wilson. U.S. equities... The relief rally has limited scope to go much further as risks to growth remain prevalent. The one thing I will say, folks, with everything going on in this market, right, the S&Ps, we're just trading at 4,200. 4,800 was the high. You better believe that we're getting up to an area where we need to sort out what's going on from a growth perspective, from a China perspective, some, from a supply chain perspective. Add in the rates rising to get inflation under control. I mean, I just went over the real estate numbers, folks. Tampa is up 34%. That is going to matter uh, tremendously. Okay, now let's jump over to, and they go through further areas of this, okay? Uh, that's, you know, they're looking for a maximum of 4,250 to 4,300 points in the current rally. That's a 3.4% gain from Friday's close. Uh, they talk about the NASDAQ 100 being more volatile as usual. 
Take that for what it's worth. Now, a nice article here from Bloomberg talking about supply chain relief sparks feud over degree of softer U.S. economy. So this is out from Brendan Murray, not familiar, but May 31st. That is today, folks, 2 in the morning, all right? Some great data in this piece. Uh, if you get, have a Bloomberg subscription, check it out. If you don't, I encourage it. It's one of the best points of data that I go through uh, each morning about the market. And some of the data that they talk about in here, there is some conflicting reports, okay? So number one, you have corrugated boxes, some calling it the canary in the coal mine, as the delay there for corrugated boxes softening, but you have data on the other side of things. Some pretty cool shipping pallets are a guide, demand still looks solid. Well, aren't they using shipping pallets to ship things that are in boxes? Don't they go hand in hand? Why is there the divergence? You figure that one out, folks, you'll solve the riddle of whether this economy is shrinking or soaring. So some of the data that I found cool in this article, 25 cargo ships headed to South California's two big ports. That's less than a quarter of the record backup that they had in January. They must have had 100 plus back there in January. Spot container rates have dropped almost 20 percent this year. The average Trans-Pacific shipping journey of 102 days right now is the quickest since November. I hadn't heard any of that data. That's pretty good data when you look at a backlog getting unbacklogged. 25 cargo ships, that's down from 100 where it was in January. Spot container rates down 20%. Trans-Pacific shipping journeys taking about three and a quarter months, the quickest since November. It's about to be June, so you're talking about six months ago. Uh, delays moving containers out of rail depots in Detroit and Memphis shorter than they were in September. Okay, and here's the kicker, though. But for every sign that a cooling economy will give supply chains room to rebalance, there's a reason for skepticism. Let's do the other side of this now. On the East Coast, ship bottlenecks are building again. The dwell time for containers is still climbing at rail yards near Chicago and Kansas City. At 9.6 days in April, the wait to move freight on rail from adjoining ports of Los Angeles and Long Beach, the longest since July. That's almost a year. It's going to be June tomorrow. And as they say, the muddled picture, okay? So they get into more action in terms of what the data is. Pretty cool. Falling lead times for corrugated boxes single signal a softening U.S. economy. So you're talking about 14 days from order to delivery for corrugated boxes right now. You were as high as 22 back in February. The 14 below where you were in November. That's what they were talking about. So corrugated boxes, right? That one's easing for sure. The lowest value on this chart. Flatbed trucks, we're going up, folks. U.S. flatbed truck rates, excluding fuel sur surcharges, jumped in the pandemic. Only down about 3% from the peak reached a year ago. These rates are still almost 50 57% higher than they were in May 2019. They call that a real-time pulse of physical commerce is the prevailing rate to move goods on flatbed trucks, excluding Fuel, let me get that exact quote, uh, fuel surcharges, freight trains, okay, now they got it here. North American rail volume during the first 20 weeks of 2022, so 2022 on this chart is going to be in the black, okay, they only have, we're only into May, so this one drops off versus every other year. The previous year, 2021 is in green. Okay, we are under where we were in green. Now, North American rail volume during the first 20 weeks of this year totaled 13.5 million car loads and intermodal units, down 3.8% from a year earlier. So far this year, intermodal volumes, those goods traveling by sea, road, and rail, have largely mirrored 2019 levels, but trailed 2021's traffic amid lingering congestion. The blue on here is 2019. So you can see where we are right near the blue, we're under where the green was for last year. Shipping pallets still going through the roof. The cost of wooden, ship, wooden shipping pallets continues to hit records this year. At Virginia Tech, home of the nation's leading pallet engineering lab, I'm taking some time for this, but it is great data, man. Um, they claim pallets move the world. It's not much of an exaggeration, given there are almost 2 billion pallets in the U.S. alone, as good 
Goods purchases outweighed services spending over the past two years. Prices for the new wooden pallets, a base of a so-called unit load, have jumped 59% nationally since the start of 2020. And here's the kicker, they're still rising. Pallet manufacturers and recyclers remain very busy. Many are worried about a downturn that could be coming, but they have not seen it materialize yet. So you go through all that data, man, it's pretty cool in terms of which way they go. Uh, not all of that data pointing to a huge slowdown at all, but you do have some indications of things easing dramatically, whether you're talking about those shipping delays, the port delays, the Trans-Pacific time to get across the, Trans -Pacific, the Pacific, and then you look at the cost of boxes that are going down as well. So there is some easing going on right now, uh, but boy, you saw the other side of that. There's still some backlogs. And China is the X factor, man. They are dealing with some COVID shutdowns. They're dealing with COVID later than all of us. And there's no reason to think that that can't come going back in the next few months. We'll see. Stay tuned, folks. We're coming back for the open. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The gold report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector, as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFM. Tom O'Brien has just announced a live Timing the Trade webinar Friday, June 10th from 9 a.m. until 2 p.m. Eastern Time. Join Tom O'Brien for five hours of live education as he teaches you his trading methodology right from his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System. In this live webinar, Tom O'Brien will be teaching you his entire trading system, including quality volume, ABC structures, Fibonacci confluence zones, cause and effect, swing points, and more. We will be limiting this class to 40 attendees, so please do not delay and reserve your seat today for this special live event with Tom O'Brien. All attendees will also receive a physical copy of his book, The Art of Timing the Trade, an $88 value, mailed to you, along with a free month of his daily newsletter, Market Insights, a $169 value. For all the details and to reserve your seat today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. we got markets open. you got the NASDAQ 100 jumping into the green for the open by five points. S&P's negative by about 15 points right now at 41.40. As I mentioned, overnight, you were trading at 42.02. We closed out last week. Friday's action at a price point of about 41.55. Is that where we were? Yes, it was. There's four o'clock. 41.55 or so in the S&P's where we closed out the action. You trade higher. Pretty dramatic action. I was thinking... At that time, didn't quite see it at 4,200. Did see it at one point when you had the S&Ps up 30 to 40 points. Said, ah, is this really going to hold until the open? Seems like so light trading over Memorial Day weekend. Not that hard to push it up. Not sure that was a real 
you know, acceleration to higher prices. Hindsight always 2020, but we open by 16 points right now. You have the Dow opening by 214. We're just under 33,000. Bitcoin, 31,800. You almost just traded at 32,000 for Bitcoin. Crude, not stopping. We just almost hit 120. Look at this volatility in crude. Is that a real print? Yeah, I think it is a real print. Remarkable. You got a pop from 928 to 929. Look at that. On a minute basis, the volume we just got. Almost 4,000 contracts traded to push that thing back down from about 120 to 119. That's a one-minute chart that you're looking at, folks, in crude. <whistles> Watch out in that crude market. All right, let's jump around to some of the FANG stocks, see how we're opening the trading week. Amazon. In a negative market, Amazon catching a bid up 1.4% right now. You're up 32 bucks on Amazon. We jump over to Apple, the big dog. Apple is flat this morning, 149.63. You jump over to Google shares, up a percent. Man, so you got Google up a percent. You have Amazon up 1.4%. Microsoft's negative by about three quarters percent. I was going to say, how's the NASDAQ 100 negative? Even when you just have a company like Apple, you have a company, and I think Tesla's positive today as well, right? Yeah, Tesla, they're chatting about the Tiger Stand up about 2%, up $15 to 775 Let's jump to Twitter, see how they're trading on the whim of Elon Musk. Twitter flat to open the trading week at $40.22. So I talk about we get some earnings. Uh, I believe we get, let's check it out. Is Salesforce today? It may be. Let's jump over to the Analyze tab. You jump to the Earnings tab. They sure are. Salesforce, they got their earnings after the bell tonight. You're looking at a stock trading at 165. You have a $13.71 move now again. Our man Kevin Hinks has explained this many times. He does the best job of explaining how this number is generated. But for the purposes of just understanding it, this is the market maker move. It's the expected move hinging on some type of event, okay? So this move has to do with what is priced in for the event, which is earnings tonight. Now, when you look at the applied move for the week, okay, if you're trading Friday's expiration, you're trading move, a move of $15, okay? There's gonna be implied volatility left in this option chain come tomorrow after the earnings are announced, and you'll probably be looking after we have that number of the difference between the two, which is about a buck fifty. And what's so cool to make sense of this is you want implied volatility through this week. You're paying $15 of movement in either direction is the implied move that is into the pricing of those options. OK, and I just said to you, well, there's about a $13.51 move priced in just for the next day for their earnings. So you have about a buck 50 for the rest of the week. Well, you know what's so cool is you want to go out the next week. Yeah, you're looking for $2.60 for the extra week. But keep in mind, folks, it's already Tuesday trading is open. That would get you a full seven extra days versus realistically right now, it's Tuesday. That contract only gets you through to Friday. And you're going to pay a buck fifty extra in option premium for Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, keeping that in mind. So interesting to understand that. Salesforce out with their numbers after the bell. Do we have Victoria's Secret? We may get Victoria's Secret after the bell today as well. Yes, we sure do. So there's some volatility for you. They spin off from Bath and Body Works. They separate those two companies. It should be Bath and Body Works spins off Victoria's Secret almost. But Victoria's Secret, $42.46 stock. You pull up the chart, this thing only goes back to when they got spun off, which was in August of last year. Got a little bit ahead of itself to 76 bucks, to say the least. You're trading at 42 bucks right now, Victoria's Secret. That's some volatility premium for you, folks. What is that, 13% potentially on their earnings after the bell tonight, $5.47 move implied for a $42 stock. All right, let's take a look at some of those other equities. Yeah, so we got... Victoria's Secret, we got Salesforce. Uh, yeah, HP, they're out with their numbers after the bell tonight. Let's take a look at some of these. The fan favorite, of course, GameStop. See how they're trading this morning. We have the S&Ps falling off right now, folks. You get the NASDAQ 100 down 100 points. S&Ps right now down 38. Keep in mind, the futures were trading at 4,200. Again, not a very real number. Super light trading overnight into the holiday weekend while futures were actually open. Uh, but you're a solid 85 points off of where futures were at overnight. GameStop. As I mentioned, out with their numbers after the bell tomorrow. You want some volatility premium playing options, man? How about a $24 move priced into GameStop? But if you're selling somebody an option, folks, you're selling somebody defined risk. If you're selling somebody defined risk in GameStop going into earnings, are you going to demand some premium? You better. And that's why they have a $24 move. Uh, GameStop, you're down 2.3% right now. And geez, you want to see a trend line. Haven't had this one up there since March, but check it out. I'm just going to extend that one to the right. Be careful, folks. 
that looks like we have lower lows and lower highs in this stock. We were up to a high of about 200 back in March 29th. We were up to a high of 250 back in November. We were up to the high of, what, 340 back in last June, almost a year ago. $24 move price into the numbers. What's interesting here is the 24 bucks. Would that pop you out to? About 157, almost right at that line. I guess that line would be about 153. So it's about a $20 move to the upside, hits you that line. Uh, to the downside, keep in mind, folks, you just traded. This is a daily chart. Did you hear me? This is a daily chart. In two days last week, you traded from 90 to 150. You better believe there's going to be some volatility on their earnings. Sometimes, though, it doesn't even play out because this stock is really not trading off their earnings right now. Uh, they're trading off the story that is behind that company. So be careful. All right, what else we have on Wednesday? We have Chewy. Hey, they go hand in hand. You got the guy that started Chewy running GameStop. Why not put the earnings next to each other and check out that chart? Another kind of pandemic darling traded from 20 bucks up to 120 and traded right back down to 2222. That is a weekly chart. That was the low last week. They're out with their earnings Wednesday after the bell. You jump over to the Analyze tab, and that's a move for you as well, man. 20% price priced into that equity for their earnings. And as I mentioned, they're out with their numbers tomorrow after the bell for Chewy Shares. And jumping forward into the week and seeing what we have. Yeah, we got what? NetApp is out with their numbers. Yeah, these are the ones that jump out, really. So keeping in mind, in terms of having volume, right, and being a liquid stock that maybe you're going to trade earnings, maybe you're going to trade options. Anytime you're trading options, folks, you really want to try and trade in a liquid equity because when you have an option chain underneath an equity, if you have an illiquid equity, then you're definitely going to have illiquid options if they're even offered. Because think about the number of different option chains. Think about the number of different strike prices, I should say, right? You have strike prices up and down the line. You have puts on one side. You have calls on the other side. If the exact strike price you want to get into, uh, whether it's a put or a call, if you want volume in that to get the best execution possible, now you can always go out in the bid and the ask, okay? But if you want some liquid markets, the best chance uh, to get a fair execution, and that's why you always want to try and do a little price discovery. If you're not familiar with it, folks, check out the program Fast Market right here at Tiger TV from Fast Market. Uh, from Kevin Hinks, Tom White, every day at 12 noon. They do an outstanding job. But then Thursday, we're going to go over after we get back from the break. You got CrowdStrike, Lululemon, Restoration Hardware. Those will be the big ones. You have Asana in there as well. Uh, Hormel Foods is out early in the morning on Thursday. Duluth Trading is out as well. But those will be the big ones. So we kick it off with Salesforce after the bell tonight. HP after the bell tonight. Victoria's Secret, a little retail. GameStop and Chewy on Wednesday. Hewlett Packard Enterprises on Wednesday and Thursday. CrowdStrike, Lululemon, Restoration. We'll go over those Thursday ones. We'll be right, we'll be right back. Are market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate L. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. 
Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. We got markets falling apart a little bit as they were just talking about in the den pretty quickly. S&P's off 1.2 percent. We'll call it 1.15, rounded up to 1.2. You're trading at 4108 right now, almost 100 points of where we were overnight. And man, you talk about an open. We just dropped 32 points in a heartbeat, folks, in the S&P. NASDAQ 100, you're negative by the exact 1.1 percent as well, 12,537. The Dow's off 400 plus right now, 32,000. 744 and you got the russell off 1.2 percent as well 1863 bitcoin a little bit of a back off as well just off the highs you're down about 700 bucks off of those highs 31,285 bitcoin still positive by 2500 bucks over the weekend you got ethereum up about 11 percent they sell off as well for ethereum all the markets selling off a little bit right now just give me one second folks okay and we jump to crude you back off a bit. We're trading just at about $119 right now in the price of crude. Gold's off $1 at 1856 and we jump to notes and bonds. A little bit of volatility around the open, man. 815, you're trading at 119.19. You trade all the way down to 119.06. We almost get right back to that same high. We did 119, 119, excuse me, 119.19 and we backed off a bit. Right now, you're talking about yields. We're pushing 2.85%, the yield on the 10-year. Okay, jumping back to a little earnings this week. I talked about it on Thursday after the close. CrowdStrike, Lululemon, and Restoration Hardware. Let's take a look. We'll pull up CrowdStrike to kick things off. There's some context for you. We need more context than that, though, because there's the pullback. You trade from 31 bucks up to 298 you back off. We just touched that 618, folks. Put it on your radar. Maybe that's the low. We'll find out. That was a similar area that you had support for CrowdStrike back in 2020. CrowdStrike, a few weeks ago, trades down to a low of 130 on the dot. We're trading at 166.64. You're negative barely on the session right now, and that's with the S&Ps down 50 points. So overperforming the market, you could say. We're going to put it back on a short-term time frame. Quite the quite the acceleration. Some of these growth stocks in the pop we had last week, man. You're up thirty dollars since last Tuesday in one week. What is that? Twenty five percent almost on this equity. Be careful when the stock goes up twenty five percent. The five trading days coming into earnings, folks. We jump over to the analyze tab. They are out with their numbers Thursday after the bell. They got about an eleven or twelve percent move priced into their earnings. So volatility. An $18 move priced into their earnings on Thursday. Keep in mind, though, we just traded up $30 in the last week coming into that event as the market got quite a pop to the upside. All right. We get Lululemon out with their numbers Thursday as well, but a 9% move. $27 move priced into Lulu. You're at 292 This thing has been very, very strong. Uh, even with the pullback, well, yeah, it's been quite a pullback over the last five weeks, I guess. I was going to say strong as in I remembered it at 400 So much for that. You traded down to 250 you're trading at 291 right now. Uh, you're negative by about a third of percent right now with the S&P is negative by 1%. And as I mentioned, they're out with their numbers Thursday, $27 move priced into that equity. 
man, pretty remarkable that you're sitting kind of right at this area of support that you've been in since the better part of 2020. And you take a look at the full Fibonacci retracement from the COVID lows to the peak high last year, and it also touches right at that 618. A lot of these growth stocks, very comparable, some of the pullbacks, the 618s all over this market. There's Lulu. There's CrowdStrike. Did you almost see those two not even change? There's Lulu. There's CrowdStrike. Some volatility in between, but they both peak late last year. You get a bit of a sell-off. You have a spike going into the beginning of April, and then you dive right to the 618. So we'll see how they trade. Uh, and the other stock, Restoration Hardware. Boy, you talk about a pullback. I know this one's pullback, man. Way below the 618. So this equity goes from $73. You get 10 bagger up to 744.56. You consolidate for the better part of last year, and then you dive right back to pre-COVID levels. You're negative by about half a percent right now. You jump over to the Analyze tab. You're talking about maybe an 11% move priced into Restoration Hardware coming out with their numbers after the bell on Thursday. But boy, you talk about that pullback. Now that one looks different. That one does not look like CrowdStrike or Lululemon. Uh, and Restoration Hardware, man, what happened to them being so well positioned to handle that maybe you get a pullback, right? Maybe the wealthiest of all going to handle things a little bit better when you're talking about home decor. Not so much the case, man. This stock more than cut in half. And boy, you, you basically got cut by a third when you were trading at 236. Yeah, 236 from 744. And keep in mind, that just was not a flash high. There was a lot of action last year where you chopped around between about 625 and 725. You did hit 744, trading at 290. Strong company. Buffett's got a position in restoration hardware. I have a small position in retirement portfolio. Wish I had gotten out at 744, um, but tiny, tiny position. In the long run, they'll be okay. They're, they are well positioned because uh, it's a nice sector to be in when you're selling goods to people at the prices they're selling them at for home decor. And that's never going to change, folks. We are spending more time at home forever. Amazon, continuing to pop, man. Look at that pop. So Amazon, you talk about a different move. That one almost looks like restoration hardware, right? You trade up to elevated prices. You chop around for a bit. You dive all the way back to pre-COVID levels. That's what Amazon did. You're trading up 2.6% for Amazon as the market's getting pretty clobbered right now. Uh, interesting. Walmart. Down four tenths percent, jumping around to some retail. Retail Target down one point six percent right now. Uh, Kohl's down two percent right now. Nordstrom's down two point five percent. Macy's with some strong numbers last week. They're down about four tenths percent. Let's jump around to some of the banks, see how they're trading. J.P. Morgan down about six tenths percent right now. Yet yeah, they traded back some pretty harsh. Bank of America from that full run you had, you just touched the six one eight here. Bank of America trading from, what, 23 bucks, uh, November of 2020. You dive up to 50. We pull right back to the 618. We're sitting about 50% right now for Bank of America. All right, folks, we got a treat. A week from this coming Friday. So you're talking about Friday, June 10th. My dad, he'll be doing an all-day webinar from 9 a.m. till 2 p.m. So it's five hours. He'll be in there live. It's going to taste take place at our Discord server. The cost is $295, folks. With that comes a month of his Market Insights newsletter. That's $169. You get a physical book of his Art of the Timing the Trade. Excuse me. Art of Timing the Trade, your ultimate trading mastery system. So you get a physical copy of the book mailed to you. That's an $88 value. The cost is $295, so you combine the $169 plus the $88, you're almost near that $295 price point just by those two products alone. Five hours with my dad, he'll be in there talking about his entire trading methodology, folks. He'll go through it all. Quality volume, ABC structures, Fibonacci confluence zones, Fibonacci in general, you combine them for confluence zones, how to use them when entering and exiting trades, cause and effect, and swing points. All of that, much more, he'll go through uh, the fundamentals of his trading methodology from his book, The Art of Timing the Trade Chart Charts. Check that out. It's a week from Friday. Uh, if we do reach 40 participants, so we'll probably cap it at that level. That's just the number that works best for uh, just the whole day, the education, being in the room, the ability for him to share his screen with everybody at once in that room. It just works better. Uh, that's a good number anyway. If we do hit it, we'll cap it. So please don't wait. You sign up, you get the newsletter right when you sign up. 
uh, and we'll send that book out to you as well. And yeah, that'll be a week from Friday. I encourage you to check it out. $295. Hasn't done one of these in a couple of years. We were looking at at least, I think it was April of 2020. So every couple of years, there's your opportunity, folks. A week from Friday with my dad. Check it out. We'll be right back to finish up the show. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&P is negative by 42 points right now. You're trading at 41.15. Keep in mind, folks, we were trading at 38.72 a week ago. So still quite the acceleration in these markets. You back things up on a daily basis to see where we are. We just got that acceleration to a 382 from that entire move lower, folks, from the end of March to the lows that we made on May 20th. As I started off the program, if you didn't catch it, I said, man, this market just took four days to crush a 382 retracement of the entire move down. And hopefully this isn't the start of the next leg down, folks, because that's only a four-day reprieve. Yeah, it seems like we're back at lofty levels, and we are when you're sitting at 4,200. But keep in mind how quick this market can move, 4,115, just like that, out of the gates. All right, in terms of what we have happening in the market, how about Deutsche Bank? They're back in the spotlight for some not-so-good reasons again. Uh, their office raided over allegations of greenwashing, so the Frankfurt offices searched by the police. Uh, the raid adds to pressure. Yeah, from their chief executive, I would say so. Uh, not sure what that really means or anything. Deutsche Bank really not trading too much lower so far on that news, but pretty remarkable how they continue 
to be in uh, not so limey light, to put it lightly. Not the best phrase, but either way, you get the point. Uh, and how about this article? So out this morning on Bloomberg, so Anderson Horowitz funders, founders fund back genomic startup existing exiting stealth. Let me get that one again. Founders fund back genomics startup exiting stealth. They got to work on their headlines, man. Uh, Ultima Genomics is coming out of stealth mode after raising $600 million, folks. The company valued at 2 or $3 billion, I think, is what that pegs it at. And what this article talks about, this company, so Ultima Genomics, it's private. They just raised money. But, man, the future is going to be wild, folks, because you look at it, okay? And what they're trying to do is they're trying to sequence a person's genome for $100. Once it gets down at that price level, the goal is to help enable researchers to more easily examine data for large populations. Now, listen, there's... there's uh, Definitely questions, okay, about this technology, how it will be used, et cetera. But from a health perspective, it's pretty wild when you look at that they, they're going to get everyone's genome. That's the deal. Illumina is in the big market right now for that. But they charge 500 600 bucks, and they're going to bring it down to 100 bucks. The future is wild. Thanks so much for starting your trading week with me, folks. Stay tuned. Dazzle's up next. Dave White's back today as well. Have a great Tuesday, everybody.